Alrighty, welcome back everyone. On my previous video, we reviewed the reasons why some men cannot grow beards. And we're going to do a quick recap on why you can't grow a beard. And the main culprit is going to be your androgen receptor sensitivity. If you have not watched my first video, please view that video first and you will see a small white card link above on the top right hand side of your screen. For this video, as the video title states, we will explore how to grow a beard outside of a beard transplant. All the methods mentioned in this video are over the counter so you don't need a prescription. However, there are da dangerous chemicals and drugs involved even if they are FDA approved. For your health and safety, I will go through my disclaimer and please pay attention. I am not a medical expert. The information that I share with you on my videos are for my personal research and I do not recommend or advise you in any way. There are definitely dangers and risks involved with using any of the supplements and the hair growth products mentioned in this video. Please do consult with a medical professional before your results may vary and I do not guarantee results. With that being said, as you can see in the table of contents here that we will cover some basics about hair before we get started. I would highly recommend paying attention and not skipping ahead if you're not familiar with the hair growth phases such as the antigen, catagen, and the telogen phases. This is because the portion on the minoxidil, we're going to require you to understand these hair growth phases. There's going to be many different ways to count and view hair growth phases, especially or essentially they are all the same, but just displayed a little bit differently. The simplest phase layout is antigen, catagen, and telogen. The more complex phase layout is the antigen, catagen, telogen, and exogen. We'll review the hair growth process as straightforward as we can. First is going to be your antigen phase, which is the phase where the hair grows. Typically for your scalp or your head hair, it is anywhere from two to eight years. This is a wide range because every person is different. If you ask me, I would say it's about five to six years. The next phase is going to be your catagen phase, which is your transitional phase where, uh, stage where your hair stops growing and it disconnects from the blood supply. For scalp hairs, this is this tip. The typical catagen phase length is about two to three weeks long. The next phase is going to be the telogen phase, where the hair is resting on your skin. Well, resting on your skin. Um, the hair during telogen phase is held by the skin and is somewhat firm, but possibly not as firm as the antigen or the catagen phases before. Typically for your scalp hair, the telogen phase is around three months. The last phase is the exogen phase, which is when your hair is being pushed out. We're learning more and more about the exogen phase and we're learning that it's just not a willy-nilly phase, but your body's actually actively controlling the shedding systematically. All right. So everyone should know the full story of how minoxidil became a hair growth topical solution. In 1970, a woman who was taking the vasodilating minoxidil medication orally to control high blood pressure was noticing rapid and unwanted hair growth and it was happening in her um, upper hair area here. Um, well, this sparked a light bulb in some people's heads and they turned this me oral medication, this blood pressure medication into a topical solution that it has helped many people dealing with male pattern balding um, or andro androgenic alopecia. Well, some really smart people took it even further and created a huge underground community of beard enthusiasts who uses the over-the-counter minoxidil 5% topical solution for beard growth. Before we start talking about the over-the-counter minoxidil 5% typical uh, topical solution, let's go over the risk and dangers of minoxidil. And I'm sure you can read all the warnings and side effects of highlighted in the red box here, so I won't bore you with all the details. And also, I can share you my personal experience on side effects in a future video as well. However, there is one thing about minoxidil that this warning label does not include, and that has to do with how your skin on your face looks. Right around 30 years old, most people decrease in collagen production. What this means is that your skin will start losing the ability to bounce back and wrinkles will start to form. There are other consequences to lower collagen production, and I will quickly mention those consequences. One, 
Due to tendons and ligaments being stiffer, you'll lose flexibility. Two, you will gradually become weaker as your muscle mass decreases. Three, your car cartilages or your cartilage starts wearing down, which can develop into joint pain. Lastly, your intestinal lining can get thinner, which is going to be a serious problem. Well, minoxidil has shown to reduce collagen synthesis on both rats and human studies. This means that you can potentially start aging your skin while, while you are using minoxidil. Since we have covered the cautionary portion of minoxidil, we need to talk a little bit more about what minoxidil does and how it is effective in the perspective of growing facial hair. Now I've watched a lot of videos and read a lot about minoxidil and how it works, but even after 30 plus years of use in the medical field, we still do not know ex the exact mechanism of action of minoxidil. And I'm going to cover these two results of minoxidil use and I'm going to do my best to theorize why those two results happen. Number one, minoxidil stimulates vellus hair follicles to produce longer and more visible transitional hairs. And here's the reason why I want to mention that you do want to look at my previous video because we do cover what vellus hair is, basically your peach fuzz. And then transitional is in between the thick hair that you have on your facial hair, like a beard, and then that's what transitional is, like in the in-between hair. Well, hairs have terminal length of how long it can be. This is determined on how long the antigen phase is. So the longer the antigen phase, the longer your hair can grow. Minoxidil has been suggested to recruit hair follicles in the telogen phase, which is the resting phase, into the growing phase of antigen phase, and thus producing longer hair um, by increasing the length of the antigen phase. Number two. Minoxidil also eventually turns these valus hairs into transitional, then finally to terminal hairs. Well, if you have watched my last video regarding why some men can't grow beards, you know that um, this is actually a byproduct of an androgen binding to the androgen receptor in your hair follicle. And this androgen receptor travels inside the hair follicle cell from the cytoplasm eventually to the cell nucleus and there it transcribes. This is going to create a mRNA, a messenger RNA, which is translated into proteins to express your male hormone phenotype such as your facial hair. Somehow, and, and, that's, the, and that's the actual mechanism of what androgen receptors do. Somehow within the three months to two years, you know, and then some, depends on some people, it could be longer, the consistent use and the prolonged use of minoxidil will eventually result in um, androgen, androgens binding to your androgen receptor. We know by the result that this happens, but we do not know exactly what the mechanism of action of minoxidil. I personally believe that only a minor portion of minoxidil actions have to do with vasculature, and this is, has to do with blood flow and increase, you know, um, just nutrients through the blood flow. And I think this is a minor portion. I think it is still has to do, you know, vasodilation and vasculature has to do with minoxidil um, effect on hair growth. But I think it's a minor one because, and here's the reason why, we have seen that topical minoxidil increases scalp blood flow at five percent minoxidil but not at 3% concentrate. However, we know that even a 2% minoxidil stimulates hair growth. And also, not all vasodilators, such as minox you know, other vasodilators, stimulate hair growth. So yes, vasodilation and increased blood flow can surely aid in the growth of facial hair, but it's probably not the absolute main reason why minoxidil's actions in, in, in stimulating hairs. And there's a lot of questions that people have of should I use the liquid version or the foam version of minoxidil or should I use the 10% minoxidil or the 5% minoxidil? So I can cover these topics in the future videos and then, but in short, I just wanna say for this video that the liquid version has more versatility as we cover supplemental uh, ways to grow your beard and it is gonna be a little bit cheaper. And lastly, you know, th there has been a study to show that there's a high, um, that high concentrate of minoxidil actually inhibits human hair follicle growth. So there is, you know, a problem of too much, right? So going um, after the minoxidil, let's go to the topics of just um, the supplemental ways to reinforce your facial hair growth. So minoxidil 5% is the main beard growing method, but there are supplemental ways to reinforce your facial hair growth in addition to minoxidil. 
And the first one is going to be microneedling or derma rolling. A study has shown that combination of minoxidil use and microneedling resulted in a statistically superior um, in promoting hair growth versus the other group that used only minoxidil. For scalp hair, since um, scalp dermis is a little bit thicker, about 1.5 millimeter thickness for the microneedle is optimal stimulating your hair follicles. And as I mentioned, your face dermis is not as thick as your scalp, so the penetration depth to the hair follicles should be less than one millimeter. You might do more damage to the hair follicles if you're using more than a 0.75 millimeter. They're different routines, and you know, uh, once or twice a week can be a guideline. And you know, I personally use once a week. This is basically a tool that has micro needles that creates tiny punctures on the surface of your face. And suggestions say that bo human body reacts with wound healing molecules such as growth factors. So that's going to be the part that grows your hair. And and do do be aware that applying minoxidil five percent, you're going to have to do that at least 24 hours after your micro needling session or dermal rolling session, as you can increase actually the actual side effects and adverse effects of minoxidil. And I do have my um, dermal rolling. Um, micro needle here and this is the 0.5 that's what I use and I use um, once a week so I just wanted to show you that so speaking of combination another combination with minoxidil can be effective it's called L-carnitine L-tartrate or short as LCLT and else and I have a video on this as well and I you know I can I can um, you guys can go check that out LCLT is a dietary supplement L-carnitine is actually you know and here's gonna be a bunch of medical jargon and the important thing is that L-carnitine is basically a carrier mo molecule that um, transports activated long chain fatty acids. So, but the important thing is that it, what, what it does is it increases in ATP production. That's important. ATP is your energy, right? And L-tartrate is a, is a very strong antioxidant. So antioxidants and um, a ATP production. That's, that's what LCLT is. Well, in a study, LCLT has been proven to increase androgen receptors and if you watch my previous video you know exactly what I'm talking about it's been proven to increase androgen receptors when taken orally and there's another study it has shown to stimulate human scalp hair growth and and it actually elongates the hair shaft and prolongs the antigen base it's very interesting sounds like exactly what minoxidil does also in the beard community and here's this is kind of, in, you know, in my video that I mentioned about LCLT, I show how to mix the uh, LCLT with the Nivea soft cream, and that should be the first English video showing you how to mix with the moisturizer. The, there are plenty of other videos mixing the LCLT with minoxidil bottles, right? But um, the mainstream idea is to do a 2% concentrate. And that, and you know, if you watch my video, you'll see like how I measure stuff. There's, there's definitely, um, you need to research on net weight versus just weight of the material. So, and then you also want to know if they will actually die, um, actually uh, make a concentrate because some of them will not mix with LCLT. Um, you can also take the LCLT orally in a small portion of maybe one to two grams. I wouldn't, you know, recommend doing it on a daily basis, but maybe you know once or twice a week. Um, since we know the main reason is related to androgen receptor sensitivity, in the next topic, there is another hopeful supplement that has shown enhancing of androgen receptor activity. Right? These, these are your, your uh, bang for your bucks because androgen receptor activity is, or androgen receptor sensitivity is going to be very important. And this is called levodopa or L-dopa for short. It is going to be a precursor to dopamine, so something before a dopamine, so it can actually go through the channels and become a dopamine. And it has been used to treat Parkinson's disease. This is one of the most dangerous supplements in this list. And a prolonged use and a consistent use of L-dopa has clinically shown to cause dyskinesia. And dyskinesia is an uncontrolled involuntary movement. Dyskinesia can involve one body part, such as an arm or leg, or the entire body. It can look like fidgeting, writhing, wriggling, head bobbing, or body swaying. I mean, none of these are none of these are you know something that you want to have you want to happen to yourself. Therefore, you're risking very high stakes if you're taking these L-dopa pills. Currently, I take these pills very seldom, seldomly, knowing the benefits but also the consequences. And now, lastly, we want to discuss ways to boost 
androgen levels and other method methods and this is going to be i'm going to start with creatine and we're going to wait end with a weight training and i know this is a lot of data dump and uh you know I, if you have paid attention so far i want you to know that hey like from now on these are the ones that actually don't um impact you as much but you know it wouldn't hurt you either if you were paying attention to this but this is just a kind of a addition to what you know to the androgen receptor sensitivity all right so let's get started on this and these are going to um, as i mentioned these are going to be very minor impacts and everything that we have discussed so far has to do with androgen receptors and hair growth and the first one is going to be creatine this raises your testosterone levels you can take up to five grams per day and mix it in liquid when used orally at appropriate doses creatine is likely to be safe and here i want to warn you but there are studies that say that says that you can't use it more than five years or you know you want to take a little break however you know there's also more concerns that creatine um taken in you know higher dosages or more highly concentrated dosages is prop, prop, uh, possibly and probably unsafe you can damage your liver kidneys or even your heart and don't take creatine if you have a history of kidney disease or you have conditions such as diabetes that increase the risk of kidney problem so if you've got kidney issues you should stay away from creatine there's also some concern that creatine might increase the the effects of mania in people who have bipolar disorder just please be aware before you take any of these supplements and check for safety and then the next part is collagen supplementation this is crucial and even though this is a minor thing i would say you should probably pay attention to this one creatine you can probably let go but number two collagen this is safe for you and this is good for you and this is also good for your beards this is like a triple whammy of goodness so this is going to be basically very important because minoxidil inhibits collagen synthesis on your face we talked about how collagen makes you look younger on your whatever like it, it brings youth right so glycine is actually about 20 percent of most collagen supplements and um, it has shown that glycine inside collagen increases the level of five alpha reductase enzymes and if you're a good student of mine and you listen to my previous previous video you know what five alpha reductase enzyme does it, it it metabolizes testosterone to dht all right so you need those and the, the more dht you have it's going to be better for your beard growth okay next one multivitamin will help you provide the micronutrients that is needed for your body to function so not only do you need this every day and also to grow facial hair i mean this is a given Weight loss, we talked about this in the previous video. It decreases your testosterone being converted to estrogen through the aromatase enzyme. And then re lastly, resistance training and weight lifting will increase your testosterone DHT naturally. Especially those um, high intensity um, workouts are definitely the best because that's when you have get a boost of testosterone and DHT. As you come to a conclusion on how to grow a beard, I wanna recognize that this video was with um, has a lot of information and for my next video series, I'm going to create one that shows my personal routine on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to go and cover um, just, you know, I will also post videos on my progress, but also what I use and, you know, I wouldn't say I recommend, but what I've been thinking will high value and what I think it's low value or low bang for your bucks. But thank you again for your support, everyone. Um, tune in for next week again for um, Beard News, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.